Okay, who will be your first witness, Mr. George? Uh, the state's first witness will be Mallory Parker. Okay. All right, let's return to jury. State recognized presence of jury. Defense. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. And did you heed all my previous admonitions? Okay. Now, how many of you are hockey fans? <laughs> did you really want to see that lightning game? Sure you don't want to see a basketball game? Okay. All right. Through one of our great community partners, Bright House Networks, you will be able to see the hockey game tonight. The details uh, will be given to you later this afternoon, but uh, you will be able to see the hockey game uh, tonight. Okay? All right. Let's proceed. Mallory Parker, M A L L O R Y P A R K E R. May I inquire, sir? You may. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Ms. Parker, how old are you? 27. 27. Are you working now? Yes. What do you do? I'm a customer service representative. How long have you been doing that type of work? Um, in this particular job, it's been about uh, a year and a half now. Do you know Casey Anthony? I do. How do you know Casey Anthony? I'm engaged to Lee Anthony. Okay. And who is Lee Anthony? Casey's brother. All right. When did you first meet Lee Anthony? Um, late in 2006. And have you two been together since 2006? Pretty much, yeah. Okay. Was there a time when you were not? Yes. When was that? Um, it was a brief period early in 2007. All right. In June and July of 2008, were you and Lee... A couple. Yes. How would you describe your relationship during this time period of June and July of 2008 with Casey Anthony? Um, I mean, we chatted every now and then. We weren't extremely close, but we kept in touch and checked in on each other. Okay. Do you have any uh, issues or problems or arguments with Ms. Anthony during this time period? Myself? Yes. No. How is your relationship with uh, Cindy Anthony? Good. Okay. Well, are, are, how, were you clo are you close to her? Yes. Were you close to her back in 2008? Not as close as I am now, but we had a good relationship. How about George Anthony? Pretty much the same. Okay. You, obviously, you knew Kaylee Anthony. Yes. Uh, prior to June of or strike that. Were you aware, directing your attention to June of 2008, were you made aware that, uh, or did you notice that uh, Casey Anthony was not at the house? Not in June, no. Okay. How about in July? Yes. When in July? Early July. Uh, how did you become aware of that? Um, Lee had received a phone call from his mom um, stating that she... Dang. Did you talk to Cindy Anthony about this? No. Upon talking to Lee Anthony, did you make did you make any attempt to try to contact Casey Anthony? Yes. How did you do that? Text message. You had her phone number? Yes. Okay. When did you text message Casey Anthony? Um it was a day or two before the July fourth weekend. What do you recall 
asking or writing to Casey Anthony? Um, I was asking if she was downtown in downtown Orlando. Was this during the day or night? Night. Directing your attention to July 3rd of 2008, did you make any further attempts to contact or find Casey Anthony? I don't recall if that was the actual date that we were downtown, but the night that we were downtown, yes, I did make further attempts. Okay. Who did you go downtown with? Uh, with Lee and another friend of ours. Okay. Who's that other friend? His name is Danny Alvarez. Where did you go downtown? Um, we went to a club on, I believe it was on Church Street. All right. For members of the jury, can you describe what Church Street was back in 2008? Um, Church Street was a, it's a street downtown that has clubs and bars and restaurants along both sides for a good couple of blocks. So it's a pretty popular place to go when you want to go out and go to a bar or something like that. When you and Lee and Mr. Alvarez went downtown, did you have reason to believe that Casey Anthony was downtown? Yes. Based upon what? Um, Lee had received information from friends or family. Did you know uh, of the specific club? Um, there was a specific club that we believed that she was at. I do not recall the name. Okay. Did you go to that specific club? Yes. About what time did you arrive downtown? If I had to guess, I'd say maybe 10 o'clock. All right. And when you went to that club, did you see the defendant? I'm sorry? Did you see Casey Anthony when you went downtown? No. Uh, during this time period, did you again try to contact her via telephone? Just via text message. All right. Uh, how many times do you believe you text? You I would say probably five, maybe six. Did she respond to those text messages? Some of them. Okay. When she responded to the, well, first of all, what were you asking her or telling her in those text messages? I was asking if she was downtown just to see if we could meet up. Okay. Did she respond that she was downtown? Um, no, she never stated that she was downtown. Okay. What did she respond? Um, I, I don't remember the specifics. I do know that she did ask if I was with Lee. Um, and then she did, uh, through further conversation, she um, was basically telling me that she didn't want the family to worry about her. She just wanted some space. Did she mention anything uh, about Kaylee? Um, not directly. I asked her if she would be coming to the house over the weekend for like a family get together and, um, and if she'd be bringing the baby and she said she would try. She would try? Mm-hmm. Thank you. Is that a yes or no? Yes, I'm sorry. How would you describe your brother's uh, <coughs> demeanor during this time period while you guys were on Church Street? I'm sorry, my brother's? I'm sorry, Lee Anthony's. Um, he, he seemed very focused, um, but also very frustrated and concerned. While you were texting or attempting to text Casey Anthony, was Lee also trying to get a hold of her as well? Yes, sir. To your knowledge, did they actually have a conversation during the night? Yes, sir. After exchanging these text messages, did you attempt to call? I don't believe so. All right. uh, how long did you stay downtown? A couple hours, a few hours. Uh, did you stay in one place or did you go to different places? Um, we mostly stayed in one place. I believe we may have checked one other place before we left, but we pretty much stayed on Church Street. Did you ever locate Casey Anthony? No. After those, exchanging those text messages on July 3rd, did you ever exchange any other text messages with her between that date and July 16th? I don't believe so. Did you ever speak with her again on, did you ever speak with her on the phone between those dates? 
I don't believe so. During this time period, did you spend any time with uh, Cindy Anthony? I don't recall. How about George Anthony? I don't recall. Would you be able to uh, tell the jury anything about their state of mind or demeanor? During? During July of 2008. Objection to speculation. Any relevant? If? Just a second. Sustained. Okay. May I have one second, Judge? Yeah. Thank you very much, ma'am. I have no further questions. Cross-examination. Good morning, Good morning. Ms. Parker. The, you were aware that you went looking for Casey because Cindy Anthony was requesting this, correct? Mr. Bias? Without telling us what was said to you. Sustain. Yes, I'm looking for the right words, <laughs> Now, you, you testified under direct that the reason you went downtown is because Lee wanted to go there, correct? Correct. And this, you went there at Lee's urging? Correct. And it was also your understanding that the reason both of you were going there was at Cindy's urging, correct? Correct. And not George Anthony. Correct. Correct. Now, you had an opportunity to view Casey and Kaylee together, did you not? I did. And did you ever see Kaylee running to Casey? I'm sorry, did I ever see what? Kaylee going up to Casey? <clears throat> All the time. And did you ever see Kaylee's affection towards Casey? All the time. And how would you describe to the ladies and gentlemen of the jury of the way Kaylee loved her mother? Um... It was amazing. It, uh, excuse me. Casey and Kaylee had a very, a very special bond. <laughs> and did it appear genuine to you, Mallory? It did. And did Kaylee ever go without food, as far as you know? No. Did she ever appear neglected to you? No. Did you ever see Casey strike or torture or punish Kaylee in any harmful way? No, sir. And the best way that you can describe their relationship would be amazing. Amazing. Thank you. Redirect. Be excused. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. May be excused. May the attorneys approach the bench for just a second. State may call their next witness. Thank you, Judge. The state would call William Waters. William Waters, W-L-I-A-M-W-A-T-E-R-S. May I inquire, sir? You may proceed. Thank you, Judge. Good morning, sir. Hi. Mr. Waters, how old are you? 32. Are you working? No, sir. Unemployed right now. 
Okay. What type of uh, work have you done? Engineering. I was doing the uh, speed rail project, light rail. What about your educational background? Didn't graduate. Okay. You are, are you still living here in the Central Florida area? Yes, sir. Sir, do you know a woman by the name of Casey Anthony? Yes, sir. Uh, when did you first meet Casey Anthony? I met Casey on the 4th of July, um, 2008. Where did you first meet her? I met her at my home. I was having a 4th of July party. Do you know Amy Heisinga? Yes, sir. I was working with her at Hulhan's restaurant. So did you meet Casey and Anthony through Amy Yes, sir. Heisinga? Yeah, they were decorating my house when I got off work that evening. All right. If you recall, uh, was this a daytime party or a nighttime party or both? It was a combo. It was kickball during the day and then after fireworks, drinking and... It was a daytime, nighttime party. Um, it followed through. It started in the daytime, then it at night. Did Ms. Heisinga and the defendant come over to your home at the same time? Yes, sir. Uh, do you recall about approximately what time that would have been? Um, or any time after lunch is around 1.30. When you first met the defendant, what was your, uh, can you tell the jury what her demeanor was? Overall, um, she was polite. Said hello, I'm Casey, and just regular conversation started. Okay. When you first met Casey Anthony, did she tell you that her daughter was missing? No, sir. Overall, did she tell you her daughter had been kidnapped? No, sir. Or that she was actively looking for her? No, sir. Yes, At that point, when you met her, did you know she had a child? Yes, sir. How did you know that? I was told by Amy a couple weeks prior, and then on conversation... Hearsay? I'll rephrase the question, Judge. Did the defendant ever tell you she had a child? Yes, sir. When did she tell you that? That evening... Uh, since this is the first time you met, did you have a, a, just a, a get-to-know-you type of conversation with Ms. Anthony? There wasn't really enough time. I was, it was since it was my house, I was kind of doing a lot of running around, making sure everything was not broken and everybody was having a good time. All right. uh, what do you recall Ms. Anthony doing at your party? She was taking care of my home while I was outside. Okay. When you say taking care of the home, what do you mean? Um, since I'm good friends with Amy, I, was, I let them to know that, you know, just make sure nobody leaves the front door with a laptop or, you know, the people in my home that I don't know, I'm out playing kickball. Um, so she just pretty much took care of my home, stayed inside the whole day. Uh, were, at the time, back in, in 2008 on July 4th, uh, were you living downtown in Orlando? Yes, sir, Thornton Park. Thornton Park, um, downtown Orlando. Is that near Lake Eola? Yes, sir. It's about four blocks away. You may. Sir, I'm showing, or I've placed in front of you what's been previously marked for identification. I believe it's LH. Uh, do you recognize that photograph? Yes, sir. This is the picture I took on the way to Lake Yola. Recognize the photograph, yes or no? Yes. What is that a photograph of? It's a photograph of Casey and Amy. We would object to the witness testifying about a photograph that has not been admitted in evidence. Overrule as to that question. I'm sorry, you may finish. It's a picture of Amy, Isinga, and Casey walking to Lake Yolo. Did you take that photograph? Yes, sir. Is that a fair and accurate representation of what both Amy, Isinga, or how Amy Heisinga appeared as well as the defendant. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, Your Honor, at this time, the state would move what's been marked uh, for identification LH into evidence as the state's next in line.
What says the defense? We would object as to relevance. It's cumulative, and we have additional argument. And prior disclosure. Approach the side, Bob. Okay, you may proceed. Thank you, Judge. Uh, again, at this time, the state would move what's been previously marked uh, as LH for identification into evidence as the state's next in line. It would be admitted in evidence of objections. Uh, may I publish this now? You may. Thank you, Judge. All right, the person in the foreground or up front, is that Amy Heisinger? Yes, sir. All right, and behind her is Casey Anthony? Yes, sir. This was taken during the day of July 4th. Yes, sir. All right. All right, sir. Mr. Waters, uh, during the course of um, the July 4th party, did you have the opportunity to speak with Ms. Anthony about her employment? At the time, no. Okay. Later on? Overall. At the time, did you have, during the party, did you have the occasion to talk about uh, her child? She mentioned Kaylee. What did she mention about Kaylee? Um, it was just a short, do um, you know I have a daughter? And, and I replied with a, yes, I do, Amy told me. And then that was left at that. Did she say anything else about her daughter? No, sir. Did you go to the fireworks? Yes, sir. Who went to the fireworks? Uh, we had a big group, mainly uh, me, Casey, Amy, and just a bunch of random friends from restaurants in downtown. Uh, while you were at the fireworks, uh, were you near the defendant? Yes, sir. Uh, did you continue to talk to her? No, sir. How come? Um, she was on the phone with her boyfriend at the time through basically the whole fireworks. Based upon... Uh, the conversa did you hear the conversation? Yes, sir. Uh, what were they talking? What was Ms. Anthony talking about? Um, it was about Tony moving back to New York. Um, I don't remember too much of it. I know the, just the baseline of it. It was just about moving to New York, and she didn't want him to. And I was really kind of focused on the fireworks. But when the fireworks ended, did you see any change in Ms. Anthony's demeanor? She was a little angry. A little angry. Did she say anything to you upon hanging up with her boyfriend? No, sir. After the fireworks, did, where did you go? We went back to my house. Um, everybody just continued to play games and drink. What time did the party end? Around 1 30, 2 o'clock. Uh, after you came back from the party, what was the defendant doing? Drinking. Okay. Was she uh, still watching over the house? Yes, sir. Okay. Did her mood change? No, sir. Uh, was she still angry? No, sir. Okay. How was her mood when you got back to the party then? Just uh... relevance in Mr. George. Are the defendant's state of mind during this time period and, and how she was acting is wholly relevant. Oh, it's me. not an objection. Carefree. No, wait. No. Anything else, Mr. George? No, objection sir. overall. What time did the party end? Around one thirty two o'clock. At one thirty two o'clock when the party ended, was the defendant still there at your house? Yes, sir. When, when she left, with who did she leave with? She left with Amy. When you left, when they left your party, did you make any plans to see her again? I got her phone number because um, I plan on going to IKEA the following day. Did you tell the defendant that? Yes, sir. When you told her you want to go to IKEA, what was her response? It was yes that she would like to go. Did you have a set time to meet? No, sir. 
All right, then let's move on to July 5th. On July 5th of 2008, did you see the defendant? Yes, sir. About what time did you see her? Around 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning. Were you expecting her at 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning? No, sir. Did you recall how she arrived at your, at your place? In vehicle or demeanor? In a vehicle? Or? Did she come in a vehicle? Um, I believe she had Amy's car. What type of car did Amy have? It was a blue Toyota Corolla. Or red, sorry, red Toyota Corolla. Did the defendant mention anything to you about why she had Amy's car? Because there was something wrong with her car. Was she, spe was she specific about what was wrong with her car? Um, no, it was either the alignment or a tune-up. All right. When she showed up, <clears throat> excuse me, when she showed up at 7.30, 8 o'clock, did you let her into your, into your home? My roommate did, I believe, because I was just getting out of the shower. Um, so what did you guys do? Um, she hung it upstairs. I got ready, and we went out shopping for the day. All right. When she first came over to your house, how would you describe her demeanor? Spunky, good attitude. Okay. Uh, was there any indication from her demeanor that anything was wrong? No, sir. When you saw her on July 5th, did she tell you that her, her daughter was missing? Overall. Can you repeat that? Sure. On July 5th, when you saw her the next day, did she tell you her child was missing? No, sir. Did she tell you her child had been kidnapped? No, sir. That she was looking for? No, sir. Did she ask you for any help in trying to find her? No, sir. Where did you go from your home? From my home, we went to Target. Who drove? I did. In your car? Yes, sir. Which Target did you go, which target did you go to? The one on, I believe it's Kirkman. Uh, across from Ikea, the Millennium Mall area. Okay. And what did you do at, uh, what did you do at Target? We got some, I got some coffee, or we got some coffee and some bubble gum. That's pretty much. Did you purchase, or did the defendant purchase anything else at Target? No, sir. From Target, where did you go? We went to, I believe we went to Ikea. <laughs> Did you, uh, have you ever heard of a restaurant called Zaxby's? Yes, sir. That's where we went afterwards. What is, what is Zaxby's? Zaxby's is a fast food chicken uh, salad restaurant. Overall. And you had lunch there? Yes, sir. Uh, again, uh, was there any change in the defendant's demeanor while you guys were having lunch? No, sir. Uh, from Zaxby's, where did you go? Um, Zaxby's, we went back to my house because she had to be at the airport at a certain time. Well, after Zaxby's, you had mentioned something about Ikea. Ikea was before Zaxby's. Oh, how long did you spend at Ikea? Um, a good, about two, two and a half hours. Why did you want to go to Ikea? I needed to go to Ikea because I needed some picture for relevance. Not I don't know why he wanted to go to Ikea. I'll Did the defendant want to go to Ikea? Yes. Okay. Did the defendant tell you what she needed to get at Ikea? Yes, sir. Overall. You can answer that question. Um, she was shopping for a um, bunch of furniture. It was her and a friend were supposed to be getting a house soon. Basically window shopping for that day. What did she tell you about her living situation? That um, her and a friend of hers that has kids were looking for a nanny, um, a stay in nanny, so they were going to have their own house together. Did she tell you this friend's name? No, sir. Did she tell you when she was planning on moving? Within the next two months. And that she needed furniture. Yes, sir. Uh, during this during this day, uh, did you and the defendant have any conversations about her employment? Yes, sir. Uh, did she tell you where she worked? Yes, sir. Where did she tell you she worked? She was an event coordinator at Universal Studios. Was she any more specific than that? 
No, sir. Other than she just did a lot of work at home over her computer. Did she mention the name of any coworkers? No, sir. Other than being able to do a lot of work from home in this job, did she tell you anything else about her employment? Just that she loved her job. That she loved her job. Did she tell you how long she had had that job? No, sir. Okay. On July 5th of 2008, did the defendant ever mention her daughter, Kaylee? No, sir. Did you ask any questions about Kaylee? No, sir. All right, so was July, <clears throat> excuse me, was July 5th a good day for you? It was a fun day, yes, sir. Did you make any plans to see the defendant again? At that time, no. Okay. Uh, at any subsequent time, did you make plans with the defendant? After a couple days after that. Okay. What and what were the plans? Um, we were supposed to go take a. Uh, we were supposed to go out to dinner and take a helicopter ride. I had some free passes for on I drive. Who was going to go on that helicopter ride? Me and Casey. Did you ask her to go? Yes. Uh, did she agree? Yes. Okay. Did that helicopter ride happen? No, sir. What happened? Um, I texted her about six times and got no reply. And then I, um, I finally said, well, I'm here and I've got to let these people know because they're about to book the ride with somebody else. And she said she was tied up and then it was left at that. Did she tell you how she was tied up? Something about a nana. A nana? A nana. Did you ask um, or did you know what a Go ahead. Did you ask or did you know what a nana was? No, sir. Okay. You said this. Do you remember the date of that? No, sir. Um, I, I just know it was a Wednesday, Wednesday or a Thursday. The Wednesday or Thursday after July 5th? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, um, would that be July 10th? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, after that, those plans canceled, did you have any other communication with the defendant? A lot of text messaging throughout the day is on that work. No. Text messaging? Understood. Mm -hmm. Did you, oh, strike that. Did you ever see her again after July 5th? No, sir. Did you have, did you make plans with her to see her and they just didn't happen? Um, yes, sir. We were supposed to meet up a couple times while I was at work, at lunch, um, but whatever happened at work, meetings or whatever happened, we never, we never really hung out after that. She had meetings? I had meetings. Oh, you had meetings, okay. Directing your attention to July 12th of 2008, did you have plans to hang out or to see the defendant, Casey Anthony? One more time, please. On July 12th of 2008, did you have plans to see or hang out with Casey? Anthony? No, sir. Okay. Did you, were you aware that she had a boyfriend? Yes. Uh, I believe you testified earlier from July 4th. Your subsequent conversations, either on the phone or via text message, was it still under your understanding that she had a boyfriend? Yes, sir. A rope. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, were you interested in Casey Anthony? Not really. I was in a breakup at the time, so really. Sustain. Um, What's the next question, Mr. George? Yes, sir. Did you receive a text? I'm sorry, directing your attention to July 15th. Did you receive a text message from the defendant? I got a text message about 1.30 in the, in the morning. Or I actually got a phone call from an FBI agent. Did you ever hear from the defendant on July 15th? I can't recall. That was, no. In any of those subsequent text messages after July 5th of 2008, uh, up until up until July 15th, did the defendant ever notice you that her daughter was missing? No, sir. Overall. Thank you.
I don't have any other questions, Judge. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Cross-examination. Good morning, Mr. Waters. Mr. Baez. I, I want to see if I understand. You had just met Casey Anthony. Yes, sir. And as far as you understood that the world that Casey Anthony lived in was she had a job. Yes, sir. And in this world, she worked as an event planner. Yes, sir. And she appeared to really love that job. Yes, sir. She talked about it with enthusiasm. Yes, sir. And she, you've turned out, you realize that turned out to not be true, right? Yes, sir. Did she give you any indication that she was lying about her job? No, sir. Did she give you any indication that she didn't believe she had a job? No, sir. And part of this world also included that she was happy. Yes, sir. And that there was absolutely nothing wrong in her life. Other than the relationship with Tony, no. Let's talk about that. That that uh, occurred on July fourth. Yes, sir. Not anywhere near July sixth, uh, June sixteenth, two thousand eight. Is that a no? Yes. No, it's a no. Okay. <laughs> now, in addition to that, the world of Casey Anthony that you knew was that she was going to move in with a friend, and that's Amy Heisinger. No, sir. Another friend. Yes, sir. And they were going to bring their children. Yes, sir. And they were going to have a live-in nanny. Yes, sir. Because it was cheaper that way than having two different nannies take care of different kids. And she was going to pay for this nanny with this event planner job that she had. I don't know how she's going to pay for it, but... And they went and... You guys went so far as to go shopping for furniture. Yes, sir. Did she give you any indication that she was faking shopping for furniture? No, sir. In fact, you believed that she was going to get a place to live with a living nanny and a roommate. Yes, sir. Now, also in this world... You believe that Casey was a well. Let me let me strike that. Let me ask you this: Casey was friendly to you. Yes, sir. She was friendly to others. Yes, sir. Um, she appeared to care for people. Yes, sir. In fact, she barely knew you, and she was watching your place for you. Yes, sir. And uh, you trusted her. I trust a lot of people until until you do something. That's not right, yeah. I'll trust anybody. Did she make off with one of your laptops or anything? No, sir. Okay. Now, do you have in, any information about June 16, 2008, when Kaylee drowned? No, sir. Do you have any information for this jury as to when Kaylee died? No, sir. Do you have any information for this jury as to where Kaylee died? No, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Redirect. Sir, if the, the statements that the defendant made to you about having a job and buying a, or getting a house with a living nanny mm. uh, were incorrect or lies. Objection, Judge. <clears throat> Sir, do not answer the question until you finish asking the question Finish asking. Based on your observations and the time you spent with the defendant, was she convincing? Mr. Bias, you have an objection to that question? <clears throat> you can answer. There was no reason to believe any different, so yes. Thank you. May the witness be excused. Yes, sir. Yes. Thank you, sir. You may be sir. excused. <clears throat> recess. We'll be in recess for 15 minutes to a quarter past hour 10. Please do not discuss the case among yourselves and remember all of my previous admonitions.
Okay, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, there are a number of stipulations that I'm going to read. Mr. George, you want me to read them all at one time, or do you want those read before you introduce the videos? Your Honor, it might be a little uh, cleaner or clearer if we were to do them one at a time. Okay. Then you may proceed, Mr. George. Uh, Your Honor, as it relates to um, what's been previously marked for identification, LN, which is a video of Target from June 30th of 2008, I believe that well, the state and the defense have entered into a stipulation. Uh, would you care to read those or do you want me to read those? It would be admitted in evidence noting previously raised objections. And the stipulation is as follows. The copy of the video surveillance recorded at Target at 718 McGuire Boulevard, Orlando, Florida on June 30th, 2008 is a true and accurate representation of the business records of Target. The parties have agreed to this fact, and it should be considered as true in your deliberation. It will be received in evidence as what, Madam Clerk? All right. Your Honor, may I publish that at this time? You may publish. Your Honor, apparently we're having a multitude of technical issues. What I would suggest um, at this point is just to go through all the stipulations and have them entered and hopefully at a later time we can we can uh, okay. publish them. The second one may work. You want to try that? All right, the next one, Mr. George. Thank you, Judge. The next one has pre uh, previously been marked for Exhibit LO, a state's LO, uh, which is a JC, uh, a video from uh, JC Penny, also on June 30th of, two, uh, of June 30th, 2008. Noted in previous objections, uh, they will be uh, admitted. It will be admitted as uh, states numbered. This is the following stipulation, members of the jury. The copy of the video surveillance recorded at J.C. Penney's on June 30th, 2008 is a true and accurate representation of the business records of J.C. Penney's. The parties have agreed to this fact, and it should be considered as true in your deliberations. Your Honor, I've been told that this particular video will work, so I would ask that we go ahead and publish this one. You may publish. Thank you. Your Honor, at this time, the state would move what's been previously marked for identification, LP, uh, 
which is a J.C. Penney video from July 1st of 2008, into evidence. Noting previous objections, it would be admitted into evidence as state's exhibit. Ladies and gentlemen, the jury to follow in stipulation. The copy of the video surveillance recorded at J.C. Penney's on July 1st, 2008, is a true and accurate representation of the business records of J.C. Penney's. The parties have agreed to this fact, and it should be considered as true in your deliberations. Thank you, Judge. At this time, the state would, would ask to publish this particular video. You may publish. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> The Honor of the State would move what's been pre what has been previously marked for identification LQ, which is a uh, video from IKEA on July 5th of 2008. As the State's next in line. Note in previous objections, it will be received uh, in evidence as State's Exhibit numbered. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the following stipulation. The copy of the video surveillance recorded at IKEA on July 5th, 2008 is a true and accurate representation of the business records of IKEA. The parties have agreed to this fact and it should be considered as true in your deliberations. Thank you, sir. May I publish? You may publish. Thank you, sir. Your Honor, at this time, the state would move what's pre what has been previously marked for identification LR, which is a target video uh, from July 7th of 2008. Noted in previous objections, it will be received in evidence as states numbered. Ladies and gentlemen, the jury, this is the following stipulation. The copy of the video surveillance recorded at target 3770 North Golan Rod Road, Winter Park, Florida, on July 7, 2008, is a true and accurate representation of the business records of Target. The parties have agreed to this fact, and it should be considered as true in your deliberations. Thank you, sir. May I publish? You may publish. Thank you, sir.
Your Honor, at this time, the state would move what has previously been marked for identification LS. It's a video from Target on July 8th of 2008, uh, as states next in line. Note in previous uh, objections, it would be entered in evidence as states numbered. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the jury the following stipulation. The copy of the video surveillance recorded at Target, 325 North Alifalia Trail, Orlando, Florida, on July 8, 2008, is a true and accurate representation of the business records of Target. The parties have agreed to this fact, and it should be considered as true in your deliberations. Thank you, Your Honor. May I publish? You may publish. Thank you.
Your Honor, at this time, the state would move what has previously been marked for identification LT, which is a target video from July 10th of 2008 into evidence as the state's next in line. Noted in previous objections, it will be received in evidence as states numbered. Ladies and gentlemen, the following stipulation. The copy of the video surveillance recorded at Target 325 North of Failure Trail, Orlando, Florida, on July 10th, 2008, is a true and accurate representation of the business records of Target. The parties have agreed to this fact, and it should be considered as true in your deliberations. Thank you, sir. May I publish? You may publish. Thank you, sir. Objections, Judge? I said, I'm sorry. I may have not heard it. So the record will be clear. It's uh, noted in previous objections. Thank you, sir. You may publish. Thank you, sir. Your Honor, at this time, the state would move what has previously been marked for identification LU, which is a target video from July 10th of 2008, into evidence as the state's next in line. Note in previous objections, it would be entered in evidence as states numbered. 
Ladies and gentlemen, the following stipulation. The copy of the video surveillance recorded at Target 3770 North Goldenrod Road, Winter Park, Florida, on July 10, 2008, is a true and accurate representation of the business records of Target. The parties have agreed to this fact, and it should be considered as true in your deliberations. Thank you, Your Honor. May it be published? You may publish. Thank you, sir. Your Honor, at this time, the state would move what has 
been previously marked for identification LV, which is a video from Win Dixie on July 12th of 2008 into evidence as the state's next in line. Noted in previous objections, it would be admitted in evidence as states numbered. Ladies and gentlemen, the following uh, stipulation. The copy of the video surveillance recorded at Winn-Dixie on July 12th and July 15th, 2008 is a true and accurate representation of the business records of Winn-Dixie. The parties have agreed to this fact and it should be considered as true in your deliberations. You may publish, Your Honor. You may publish. Thank you.
And, Your Honor, we'd like to publish the next Windexy 715. You may publish. Thank you, sir. Your Honor, apparently we're having some technical issues with that one. May I um, ask the, if we can get those technical issues resolved, we can um, publish it at a later time? Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, Your Honor, at this time, uh, the state would move what has been previously marked for identification LW which is a Bank of America video from July 15th of 2008. Note in previous objections, it would be admitted into evidence as state's exhibit numbered. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the following stipulation. The copy of the video surveillance recorded at Bank of America on July 15th, 2008 is a true and accurate representation of the business records of Bank of America. The parties have agreed to this fact and it should be considered as true in your deliberations. Provided the technology cooperates, Your Honor, may I publish? You may. Thank you. Again, Your Honor, we'd like to publish that at you a later time. At a later time? Thank you, sir. Okay. Your Honor, at this time, the state would move what has been previously been marked for identification LX. It's a blockbuster video from July 15th of 2000, 2008 into evidence as the state's next in line. Note in previous objections, it would be admitted into evidence as state's exhibit numbered. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, we have the following stipulation. The copy of the video surveillance taken from the video recorded at Blockbuster Video on July 15, 2008 is a true and accurate representation of the business records from Blockbuster Video. The parties have agreed to this fact and it should be considered as, a, as true in your deliberations. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, and again, we would ask uh, once we have the technical issues worked out if we may publish this at a later time. You may. Thank you, sir. Okay, who's your next witness? Your Honor, the state call Catherine Sanchez. Catherine Sanchez, S-A-N-C-H-E-Z. You may proceed. Thank you. Ma'am, please tell us your occupation. I'm a district manager for AMS. I'm sorry, the audio cut out. Can you district that? Manager, yeah, district manager for AMSCOT Financial. All right. How long have you been employed with AMSCOT? Five years. What type of a business is that? Uh, we are a financial institution. Are you employed at a specific location? Uh, not at this point. I run 16 stores. Okay. Back in June and July of 2008, were you employed at a specific Amscot location? Yes, I was. Where was that? Um, Golden Run in Colonia. Okay. The Amscot at Golden Rod in Colonial? Yes. Would you recognize it? Were you to see it again? Yes, the arms got to go there in Colonia. All right. Mm -hmm. um, may I have HK for identification? Just a bit. Can you see a photograph in front of you, ma'am? Yes. Do you recognize what is depicted in the photograph? Yes, I do. What do you recognize it as? It's the location where I used to work. Okay. The Amscot at Goldenrod and Colonial? Yes. Is that photograph a fair and accurate representation of the, uh, at least part of the exterior of that Amscot? Yes, it is. Your Honor, at this time I would seek to introduce States HK for identification into evidence as the next numbered exhibit. What says the defense? No objections, Judge. Be received in evidence as uh, states numbered. 
May that item be published to the jury uh, while the witness testifies, Your Honor. You may publish. Ma'am, there are some other businesses that are located next to this Amscot, is that correct, over? Yes. This side, if you can see what I'm marking with the telestrator. Yes. Okay, what is that? It's a Papa John's and a Quiznos. Are there any other businesses within that small plaza? No. All right, I have another uh, photograph, HL, for identification for you to look at. Can you see that on yes. your monitor? Yes, I do. Do you recognize what's depicted in that photograph? Yes. What do you recognize it to be? It's part of the parking lot of the branch. Okay. Is that photograph a fair and accurate representation of that portion of the uh, Amscot and the parking lot? Yes, it is. Ma'am, there are some other businesses that are located next to this Amscot, is that correct, over? Yes. This side, if you can see what I'm marking with the telestrator. Yes. Okay, what is that? It's a Papa John's and a Quiznos. Okay. Are there any other businesses within that small plaza? No. All right, I have another uh, photograph, HL, for identification for you to look at. Can you see that on yes. your monitor? Yes, I do. Do you recognize what's depicted in that photograph? Yes. What do you recognize it to be? It's part of the parking lot of the branch. Okay. Is that photograph a fair and accurate representation of that portion of the uh, Amscot and the parking lot? Yes, it is. Your Honor, at this time I would seek to introduce States HL for identification into evidence as the State's next numbered exhibit. What says the defense? No objections, Your Honor. It, it received an evidence as uh, States numbered. <coughs> Your Honor, permission to publish to the jury. You may publish. <coughs> Ma'am, can you explain what we're looking at? Uh, the parking lot of the Amscar. Okay. What is, what's back here behind the Amscot? There's a Sam's Club. And this item that I've circled in pink, what is that? The dumpster. Okay. Does your business utilize that dumpster? Yes. Do you have knowledge as to whether or not the other businesses that you mentioned, the Papa John's and the Quiznos, utilize that dumpster? Yes, they do. Can you see what's been marked as HM for identification? Yes. All right. What is it? Just a parking, more parking spaces. All right. Is this... Yeah. Is this part of the front of the Amscot? Yes, it's actually to the side. All right. In what is now States 30 in evidence, we saw a dumpster. Is this a closer view of the dumpster as well as a portion of that parking lot? Yes, it is. Is it a true and accurate representation of what that uh, section of the parking lot looks like at the Amscot where you were employed in 2008. Yes, it is. Your Honor, at this time, I would seek to, seek to introduce HM for identification into evidence. It will be received in evidence as states numbered. Permission to publish? You may publish. Ms. Sanchez, let me direct your attention to June 27th of 2008. Were you working that day at the Amscot at the corner of University and Goldenrod? Yes. What would your work hours have been that date? From 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. At any point in time on that date, did you notice a white Pontiac Sunfire at your establishment? Yes, I did. Okay. Where did you notice it to be at your, at your workplace? It was parked right next to the dumpster. All right. 
I believe you have access to the Telestrator as mm -hmm. well up there. If you could put uh, an X or an arrow marking uh, the direction in which the vehicle was facing next to the dumpster. All right. What is it that you've tried to illustrate for us? That's where the car was parked at. All right. Was the car parked back end in or front end in to that space? Back end. Okay. Was it parked straight into the spot or was it uh, slightly askew? No, it was parked straight. Okay. Did you see anyone at or near the vehicle? No. Did you see when the vehicle was parked there? No. On that date, June 27th of 2008, did you go up to the vehicle for any purpose? No, I didn't. Okay. Did you do anything with the vehicle that date other than take notice of its presence? No. Was the vehicle there when you left work that day? Yes. Did you return to work the next day, June 28th? Yes. Right. What hours would you have worked that date? 7 to 2. Was that a Saturday? Saturday. Was the vehicle there on Saturday when you arrived yes. for work at 7? Yes, it was. Okay. Did you see anyone get out of the vehicle? No. Did you see anyone at or near the vehicle? No. Did you go up to the vehicle on that date? Yes, I did. Okay. What did you do? I wrote down the tag number and I walked around the vehicle. Okay. Did you touch the vehicle in any way, shape, or form? No. Okay. When you said you went up to the vehicle, explain to us what you did. Um, I walked to the vehicle to get the tag number um, so I can report it as an abandoned vehicle, and I also just walked around to see if there was any notes or anything that would indicate that somebody had broke down. All right. Um, you're talking about somebody leaving a note on the windshield or somewhere visible inside the car? Yes. Mm -hmm. That would indicate that they were coming back? Yes. Okay. Did you see anything like that? No. So did you look inside the vehicle? Yes, I did. What were you able to see, if anything, inside that you recall at this time? I don't remember much. I know it was a little messy inside. I remember seeing a blanket in the back seat. Other than being a blanket, do you re recall whether or not there's any more specific description of what the blanket looked like? No. Did you try the door handles? No. Once you wrote down the tag number, um, did you use that information in any way? Yes, I called the Orlando Police Department, non-emergency, to report that was a vehicle abandoned in a parking lot. Okay. Is that part of the policy and procedure of the AMSCOT uh, to report cars that people don't retrieve? Yes, it is. We called before we told the car just to ensure that it was sent reporter stolen. Okay. Um, did you receive information that it had not been reported stolen? Yes, they, they say it was not reported. Right. Once you've received that sort of information, uh, do your policies and procedure require you to take some other steps uh, to achieve the removal of the vehicle. Yes, at that moment I notified my compliance officer and he told me to wait one more day before I would tow the car. Okay. Does the AMSCOT, to your knowledge, have a contract with a local towing company? Um, yes, Johnson. Johnson's? Yes. All right. So on Saturday, June 28th, um, Based on instructions given to you, you did not call for the tow? No, I didn't. Okay. Did you do that on Sunday, June 29th? No, I was off on Sunday. 
Did you return to work on Monday, June 30th? Yes, I did. Was the vehicle still there? Yes. Since the vehicle was still there, uh, did you take some action? Yes, I did call the tow company. Okay. Did you call Johnson's, Johnson's as you had earlier indicated? Yes, I did. Did it appear to you that over the course of those three days, uh, the 27th, the 28th, and then when you returned on the 30th, uh, that the car had moved from its position in that spot? No. On either of those three days, did you see anyone get out of the car? No. Did you see anyone at or near the car? No. So once you called Johnson's, did they arrive? Yes, they did. Okay. Did you go out to the car to assist them with the tow in any way? No, I didn't. Did you observe them towing the vehicle away? Yes. When you came to work on the 30th, aside from calling from for the tow company, did you go up to the vehicle? No, I didn't. You said on Saturday, June 28th, that you approached the vehicle, took the tag number, looked inside. Did you notice whether or not there was any odor emanating or coming from any part of the vehicle? No. Um, did you notice whether or not there was any odor emanating from that area? Yes, but since it was the dump, the part it was parked next to the dumpster, so it was it was just a normal smell for that area. Are you telling the jury that since there's a dumpster there, it, if you're in that spot or in that area, there's a smell? Sustain, rephrase the question. If you're in that parking spot, is there a smell in that vicinity? Yes, there is. Does Amscott have surveillance cameras? Yes. Do you know if they were working on June 27, 28? I don't know. We don't manage that from the branch level. Okay. Is that something that you would have access to no. at the branch? No. Where, where would that information be obtained? Our corporate office. Okay. Did you have to sign paperwork for Johnson's Wrecker once they removed the vehicle? Yes. Did you see the vehicle again after that? No. Did anyone come into the branch while you were there inquiring about the vehicle? No. That's all the questions I have for the witness. Thank you, Your Honor. Cross-examination. Good morning, Ms. Sanchez. Good morning. I wanted to ask you about the cameras that are there. Can we have exhibit eight here? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mario. Your Honor, can we publish this to the jury? It's already been admitted. Oh, I'm sorry. No, that's okay. Now, the cameras that are there, there's on several areas, correct? There are several cameras? Yes. And they're on each corner? I'm not sure where exactly. I don't remember. Do you see where the car is, the silver car is parked here? Yes. And do you see a camera there up on that corner of the yes. building? Yes, yes. Isn't there a, uh, another camera on the other side of the corner? I do not know. As far as your knowledge as the cameras, there are multiple cameras, right? Yes. And this is a location where there's sometimes a significant amount of cash? It could be, yes. And that's there for your security? Yes. And that would include cameras inside? Yes. And cameras outside? Yes. And these cameras, they're visual to the public, right? Yes, they are. And they sometimes act as a deterrent for crime, do they not? Yes. 
And so anyone who is driving by could see that there are cameras covering the parking lot, correct? If they look, I guess, yes. <laughs> okay. Now, beyond uh, your establishment, the very next door neighbor is the Sam's Club, right? Yes. And there's a gas station right there, is there not? Yes, there's, there's a gas station. And then after this gas station, there's another gas station after that, is there not? Yes. Okay. And so if someone runs out of gas, they can easily go get gas next door. Yes. Okay. They don't need a car to go there, is what I'm saying. No, it's, it's very close. It's at walking distance. Okay. And when you went up to the car on the 28th, you smelled trash, did you not? Pretty much, yeah. There's food and everything, so yes. Okay, no further questions. Thank yes. you, Ms. Sanchez. Okay. Any redirect? Just one question. When you're talking about smelling trash and referring to there's food and everything, are you talking about in that dumpster? In the dumpster, yes. That's all I wanted to clarify. May the witness be excused. You may. You smelled no distinct difference from the trash when you were there near the car. You didn't smell anything other than trash, right? Just a, the regular smell that would come out of the dumpster. Okay, thank mm -hmm. you. You're welcome. May the witness be excused. Yes, thank you, ma'am. You may be excused. State may call the next witness. Fine. Simon A. Birch, S-I-M-O-N-B-I-R-C-H. You may proceed. Thank you. Uh, where do you live, sir? Where do you live? Uh, Madison, Wisconsin. Okay. Did you ever live in Orlando? I did. When was that? Um, I left here in 2009, 2006 through 2009. Okay. When you were here in Orlando, uh, how were you employed? I was the operations manager for Johnson's Record Service on Narcusi Road. Okay. What are your, or what were your responsibilities uh, or duties as the manager at Johnson's Record on Narcusi? Uh, I was responsible for the day-to-day -day operation of the location uh, to ensure the employees uh, perform the duties as required and to ensure the facility was kept in the uh, condition and responsibilities that were required by the company. Okay. The facility there on Narcusi Road, is it secured? Yes, ma'am. Can you describe the security measures that uh, Johnson's Wrecker has taken? Sure. The entire property was fenced by a seven-foot um, chain-link fence with barbed wire around the top of it. And then inside that facility was uh, an additional fenced-in compound, um, which was locked and gated at both ends, again by a chain-link fence with barbed wire. And inside that facility was uh, secured indoor storage, if it was needed. It was kind of one inside the other, inside the other. Okay. Uh, did you also live on the property for a yes. period of time? Yes, ma'am, I did. When was that? Uh, the entire period of time I was there, there was a, a, a mobile home there, and as, my, as part of my job, I lived there on site um, 24 hours a day. Okay. Do you recall whether or not uh, Johnson's Wrecker received a Pontiac Sunbird back on June 30th of 2008, excuse me, Sunfire, a 1998 Pontiac Sunfire on June 30th of 2008 uh, from an Amscot? Yes, ma'am. Located at 7501 East Colonial Drive. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Your Honor, may I approach with a stipulation? You may. Your Honor, at this point, may we announce the stipulation? Yes. yes. Ladies and gentlemen, the jury the stipulation reads as follows between the state of Florida and the defendant, Casey Mary Anthony. 
On June 30th, 2008, Johnson's record service towed a 1998 Pontiac Sunfire from Amscott, located at 7501 East Colonial Drive. The copies of the records of the Johnson's record service regarding this transaction are a true and accurate representation of the business records of Johnson's record service. The parties have agreed to this fact, and it should be considered as true in your deliberations. You may proceed. Thank you. If I may approach the witness, Your Honor. May. Sir, I'm going to show you what's been marked as states J, K for identification. Have you take a look at the documents inside the envelope and tell me if you recognize them. Yes, ma'am. What do you recognize those to be? Uh, these are the, um, the tow sheets, the impound sheets, the private property removal certificate, the um, tag talk that was done to um, produce who was the uh, registered owner of the vehicle. The, the court reporter needs to know what you've titled that document. That is the tag talk document, tag talk, T-A-G-T-A-L-K. It's the records that come back from Orange County is, that notifies us who the registered owner of the vehicle is. And um, this is the Orange County Sheriff's Office vehicle impound sheet that we have to send to Orange County, notifying them that we have the vehicle. And then the last page is a copy of the certificate of the title and what I believe is Mr. Anthony's identification that they'd have had to produce to reclaim the vehicle. Those documents are accurate uh, business records of Johnson's record? Yes, ma'am. Your Honor, in light of the testimony and the stipulation, I would seek to introduce J.K. for identification as any uh, objections? No, sir. It will be received in evidence as states numbered. Mr. Birch, when you received a when you receive a car or this car in particular, uh, what action is taken? by Johnson's record. What do you do with the vehicle? Initially, the vehicle is stored. Um, when the driver brings the vehicle in, he fills out the necessary paperwork, which is then given to the data entry clerk who's working in the office at the time. You're talking about when the tow truck driver brings the vehicle in? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Uh, the driver has a set procedure to go through, uh, writing out on his invoice and his impound sheets, the vehicle identification number, the license plate number, the location of the, of the collection. And then he turns that paperwork in on arrival back to the facility after the vehicle's been unloaded. And the data entry clerk, whoever that might be at the time, would then run the tag talk, notifying us of who the vehicle is. The vehicle's entered into the computer system, and the paperwork is filed accordingly in the daily, in the daily files. Um, that's all that's done on the first day that the vehicle comes in. Okay. Is there a specific location on the property where vehicles are stored? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Is there a distinction made for private tows uh, or tows that are generated by a law enforcement agency or some, some other reason for a tow? Yes, ma'am. Tell us how that works. Um, the vehicles are segregated uh, in, in that particular yard um, depending on what department had the vehicle towed and why the vehicle was towed. Uh, due to the volume of vehicles that we had through the yard, it made documenting, processing, and maintaining those vehicles uh, a lot easier if they were marked accordingly and stored accordingly in their own individual locations. I'm going to show you what's been marked as LG for identification. Can you see a photograph in front of you? Yes, ma'am. What is it that we're looking at? That's an overhead view of the um, storage facility at 7777 Narcusi Road. All right. Now, since 2008, there has been some work done to Narcusi Road? Yes, ma'am. It's been widened. Okay. Uh, did that require some changes to the actual record yard? 
Uh, minor changes to the front of the yard, yes, ma'am. The uh, fence line was brought back uh, by recollection probably about 100 feet from the road line, from where it used to be. Um, it follows the same contour. It's just probably about 100 to 125 feet closer to the property than it was before. Okay. Other than the changes that were necessitated as a result of the widening of Narcusi Road, is this photograph a fair and accurate representation of the layout of the yard of Johnson's record back in June and July of 2008? Yes, ma'am. Your Honor, at this point, I would seek to introduce LG for identification into evidence. What says to defense? No objections, Your Honor. It will be received in evidence as states number... Permission to publish this item. Right, Mr. Birch, first of all, uh, over here, the uh, area that I've indicated with uh, red, what is that? That's Narcusi Road. Okay. The area that I've circled, tried to circle, uh, in red, what is that? That's the uh, mobile home trailer that's uh, located. The physical address is 7781 Narcusi Road for that. Now you've mentioned that this entire compound is fenced? That is correct. Can you show us where that is on the diagram? And you can use that as well and use your finger to uh, indicate the fenced area. Uh, the front fence line starts here, runs down all the way beyond the end of this picture and would run like this all the way up here up here and that would be the external perimeter all right how does the general public gain access to the tow yard uh, there's a gate entranceway off of Narcusi Road and during regular business hours the double gate would be unlocked. The gate entry into the yard was always kept closed even during business hours and there was parking provided in front of the office for the members of the general public to park their vehicle and then they'd approach the, um, the window of the office which was um, bulletproof glass with a speakeasy window in the middle of it. Do you have bulletproof glass there for a reason? Um, the, that actual window, when this office was, um, was uh, remodeled, that window came from our other facility, which um, had bulletproof glass all around for reasons, I guess, in the past. And when we remodeled this facility, we just installed it um, as just as a means of protection, should we need it. And that way we didn't have to have any physical contact with the customers when they first approached the, the building. It was just something that the company felt was a better, a better form of security for the employees. All right. People generally aren't happy when they come to the tow yard to pick up their vehicle? No, ma'am. People are never happy when they come to a tow yard to pick up their vehicle. Okay. So when someone would arrive there, how would they access a car that's been towed? Uh, well, the procedure would be, uh, say, as we had the gate, the yard secured. Uh, once they approached, um, the office was always manned when there was someone, when the building, when the facility was open. And so as the vehicle would approach, you could see it from anywhere in the office, and therefore the, uh, the dispatcher or the clerk on duty would approach the, the, uh, the glass from our side, and then the member of the, the, the general public would walk down the steps and approach the window. There was a sign above the window that said, this is the, you know, the, the window you come to. And it was fairly obvious where you needed to go. And, then they'd come up to the window and explain what they were there for. Okay. You said that Johnson's tower had received a 98 Pontiac Sunfire on June 30th of 2008. Um, did you have contact with it on that day? No, ma'am. Okay. Do you recall where it was stored during the time it was at Johnson's Wrecker? Yes, ma'am. Is that location shown on this diagram? Yes, it is. 
Let me see if I can switch the color for you. I'm trying to get it different. All right. <laughs> Try that, and if you could, uh, with the mark, indicate where the vehicle was stored. It was stored right on the end here, a little bit close right there, where that um, shrub is now. Okay. At the time, that shrub was kept trimmed when I was there, but the vehicle was parked right there on the corner. Did it stay there the entire time it was there? Yes, ma'am. How long was the vehicle on the property at Johnson's Wrecker? I don't recall the exact length of time. Um, I, if I remember rightly, it was around about two weeks. Okay. When a vehicle is on property for that long, uh, do you have some rules or regulations that you have to follow as it re relates to the disposal of that vehicle? Yes, ma'am, we do. What would those be? Depending on why the vehicle was towed and the year of the vehicle, depending on how we dealt with it and how we processed it, um, the state of Florida gives towing and recovery uh, companies the opportunity to um, reclaim the vehicle if it's not picked up, to recoup some of the losses involved with towing and storage. One of my jobs as the operations manager was to determine should the vehicle reach its time limit and the vehicle would be disposed of whether or not that would be a vehicle that we would title and, and resell on or it would be a vehicle that we would dispose of by crushing it and, and scrapping it out. Um, so at some point I would make the determination during the time the vehicle was on, pro on property to start the mental process of what we were going to do with it should it stay the duration of its time frame. Okay. How long is that before you all take action uh, either to retitle the vehicle in your name or the, the company's name or to dispose of it in some other De fashion? Depending on the year of the vehicle, ma'am, there was a cutoff point, and I'm, I don't remember exactly what the year was, but it was either 35 days or 50 days. Is there some obligation to make an attempt to notify the registered owner of the vehicle's location? Yes, ma'am. Tell us about that. How is um, that achieved? On the third business day, the, the notification was handled by our uh, main office. When we processed the paperwork, it was entered into our computer system. And on the third business day that the vehicle was with us, a letter would be generated um, to the last registered owner of the vehicle, which was the name that appeared on the tag talk. And that letter would be generated and sent via certified mail to that registered owner of the vehicle notifying them uh, that we have the vehicle and as of that date what the charges would be to pick up the vehicle and where the vehicle was located. As it relates to this uh, 98 Pontiac Sunfire, uh, since you indicated it was on property for uh, approximately two weeks, did you take any steps to evaluate uh, how that vehicle should be disposed of? Yes, ma'am. What did you do? Uh, normally on the third day of a vehicle being on property, third or fourth day, I would start uh, paying a little more attention to it. We had quite a high turnover of vehicles in and vehicles out, so it didn't behoove me to pay a lot of attention to a vehicle unless it sat for a few days. Mm -hmm. um, and I can't be specific, but round about the f fourth or fifth day that we'd had the vehicle, um, I went up to it and gave it a cursory external inspection to determine what condition it was in um, as to whether or not should the vehicle last, you know, the duration, it would be worth our while um, titling the vehicle and going through the expense of getting keys and whatever else would be necessary to, to make the vehicle sellable. Um, I would have looked at the external condition of the vehicle, around the vehicle, underneath the vehicle, um, through the windows of the vehicle, look at the interior. Um, I was not permitted to enter the vehicle, and the vehicle remained locked um, because it wasn't our vehicle, and therefore at that time it wasn't. Uh, we were not allowed to gain entry to the vehicle. Okay. So my inspection was limited to a visual external and through the, uh, the glass of the vehicle. All right. uh, I take from your testimony that you didn't have the keys to no, the vehicle. Okay. Uh, did you make a, an independent determination that the doors of the, the car were locked? Yes, ma'am. Just by pulling the handle? Yes, ma'am. 
Do you recall at the time you made this cursory evaluation of the vehicle after it had been there for three or four days, whether or not you noticed any odor emanating or coming from the vehicle in any way? As I was looking around the vehicle, there was nothing really noticeable at all um, until I put my hand up against the glass to shield the sun and look through the windows. And at that point, I did notice a, a fairly strong odor emanating from the vehicle, yes. Okay. Now, how long total have you been in the, the towing business? Uh, with exception of a two-year hiatus in the mid-90s, it's been almost 30 years. And during that two-year hiatus, what job did you have? I was the operations supervisor for waste management in Madison. What is waste management? Uh, they're a refuse and recycling company. Garbage? Yes, ma'am. Would it be fair to say that you've been exposed to a wide variety of odors? Yes, ma'am. Have you ever had the opportunity uh, in your 30 years as a, in, in the towing business, to uh, come across a vehicle in which there had been a dead body? Yes, ma'am. Tell us about that experience. I couldn't be specific as to how many, um, six, seven, eight times maybe in my career have I been, had the misfortune to either tow or process or be involved with a vehicle that's had some kind of um, long-term fatality in it, um, as opposed to traffic fatalities, which I've been to, unfortunately, hundreds and hundreds. But uh, a long-term, yes, it's been several, several occasions. All right. Um, in 2008, uh, was there a vehicle on another part of this property that um, was stored after an individual had committed suicide in it? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And that those remains had not been found for several days? Yes, ma'am, that's correct. Okay. You had the opportunity to smell that odor of that separate vehicle? Yes, ma'am. You had talked about being uh, in the waste management business. Um, having experience in that, did you become familiar with the varying odors of all manner of garbage? Yes, ma'am. Okay. How about uh, items that people would leave in their car that after they were arrested, uh, where the, the car had to be towed or they broke down? Sure. And, well, tell us about the, the range of experiences that you've had with items left in cars. Um, towing for uh, many law enforcement um, agencies over the years. I've um, towed, towed or been around numerous vehicles that have been towed for um, DUIs or from uh, breakdowns that people occur on the way back from shopping, from restaurants with food left in the car. been exposed to multiple different scenarios of pretty much anything you can imagine being left in a vehicle. Most people don't expect their vehicles to be towed, and therefore day-to-day -day life goes on. People get injured in accidents on the way back from the grocery store, mm -hmm. um, and they wait a week to come and pick up their groceries that were in the car that they left in the, in, in the aftermath of the accident. So there have been numerous, many, many, many different scenarios. Having had that varied experience, can you distinguish between the scent of trash or garbage and the scent of decomposing human remains? Overall? In my opinion, uh, in my experience, the smell of uh, decom decomposition is unique. Um, in comparison to the smell of rotten food or rotten garbage or anything else. 
it's a very, very unique, distinctive smell. When you smell that, do you, in your opinion, know the difference? Yes, ma'am. Okay. You said that when you did your cursory inspection and put your hands up to the, the glass to shield the sun, you noticed an odor. Yes, ma'am. At that point. Um, were you able, at that juncture, to make any connection as to whether or not that was garbage or something else? It was an odor consistent to what I'd smelt in the past when it comes to decomposition. Um, the car is fairly well sealed, so without being able to enter the vehicle, the, the strength of it was uh, a little minimal, but it was still there. Um, the instant flash in my mind was, whew, you know, I know what that smells like. But looking in the vehicle, noticed nothing to trigger anything. And at this point, it's just a car in the yard. Okay. So after that cursory inspection of it, what action, if any, do you take with the vehicle while it sits there? At that point, I didn't do anything else with the vehicle. I'd made my inspection. I determined what, what we were going to do with the vehicle. You know, should it um, go through the, the, the due process? and that we gain possession of it. I made my determination what we do with that vehicle. Um, and at that point, I treated it as every other vehicle in the yard. You know, it, it had been correctly stored. It had been correctly marked. The paperwork had been correctly processed. Um, and at that point, it was just, we just would, would leave it to, to fulfill its course. All right. Did there come an occasion where someone came to pick up the vehicle? Yes, ma'am. Do you yourself recall when that was? I believe it was July 15th, if I'm correct. Okay. Would you like to review the records of, of Johnson's record? Just yes, please. May I approach the witness? You may. Yes, ma'am, July the 15th. Yes, ma'am, 2008. Do you recall who came to pick up the vehicle? Yes, ma'am. Who was that? Uh, it was uh, Mr. and Mrs. Anthony. Did you have contact with both of them? Yes, ma'am. Where did that occur? Um, through the glass, through the, uh, the bulletproof glass initially. Okay. And what do you recall of that initial contact with them? Uh, the time that they arrived, I was in my office, um, which is off of the dispatch clerk office. And so I was doing some paperwork in there, and I heard my clerk at the time uh, engaging in conversation with um, persons or people at the window um, who were becoming very agitated. And uh, one of my duties there was to ensure, obviously, that you know, the, the safety of my employees primarily, but also that the, when confrontation occurred, that I would... Uh, try and keep that confrontation to a minimum. So I came out of my office and uh, my clerk turned to me and kind of gave me the look and said, hey, can you help me out here a little bit? I've got some customers that are a little bit unruly. Um, so I approached the, the bulletproof glass and spoke to Mrs. Anthony, and she was very agitated, um, very upset, as is quite common. Um, wanted to know why it was so expensive to get her car picked up why hadn't we notified her right away when we had her car? Um, genuinely being, um, I wouldn't say belligerent, but Jeff definitely agitated about the situation, which was pretty normal. Um, for Were you able to answer those questions? Yes, ma'am. Um, we looked at the calendar. As I said, we were required to, to send out a certified letter, and we looked at the date that the vehicle came in and the calendar and realized that the date that the mail would have gone out, combined with the, um, the days of the week, that there was a pretty good chance that that letter went out uh, and would have been stuck in the mail during the 4th of July holiday, and then the upcoming weekends. And I believe they'd said they were out of town for a couple of days, and then it wasn't until they got back that they had to go and sign for the letter and so on and so forth. So at that point, it was determined that 
you know, we'd followed due process and it was just a, um, a roll of the dice, I guess, with the dates and the holidays that it took that long for the letter to get to them from our perspective. Once you answered whatever questions or concerns that they had, did you uh, proceed to go to the vehicle with either one of them? Yes, ma'am. Okay. May I have a moment? Judge, would you like me to press on? No. Okay. I saw that look in your eye, so... <laughs> Okay. Um, Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the uh, time is now 12 noon. It's time for your lunch. Your lunch should be here. Uh, we're going to recess for lunch. Please remember my previous admonitions. Do not discuss this case among yourselves, nor with anyone else. Uh, we will be in recess to 1.30. Any additional instructions on behalf of the State Order Defense? Okay. We're in recess.